everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video are you subscribed that's basically what I'm gonna say each and every single time I start a new video are you subscribed are you part of the JK family and if you're not please do subscribe down below we would love to have you join us we're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers before June so that I can do a nice nice giveaway june is my birthday month and i would love to do a giveaway in my birthday month if we're not there in jill i don't know i don't know but basically this is a um q a i asked you guys to send in some of your questions about anything let's talk let's chat and i asked you guys to send them in on my community tab on youtube and i also asked on instagram but i think i got a lot of questions on YouTube and a lot of the time I always work on Instagram and quite neglect the YouTube side so I'm gonna go through the YouTube questions first we're gonna catch up we're gonna talk there I don't quite remember the last time I did a Q&A video so I just wanted to get people who are new to the channel more familiar with me and let's talk and let's chat and let's have a good time I don't even have a drink right let's go so I got a couple of questions on my community tab um, on YouTube and we're gonna get into it we're gonna talk about it and um, let's get started let's get started um, the first question is from Olerato and she says any advice on confidence also you spoke about your teeth a while ago why didn't you get braces I hated my teeth so I've got braces and now I hate the process even more um you know what if i'm gonna give tips that's the kettle i don't know how wise this idea was but it's fine if i'm gonna give tips about confidence the only thing is to be confident for me is to know who you are and know what you're about when you know who you are it's very easy to be confident about yourself and whatever you project onto the world so when you know who you are confidence comes easier when you're unsure about certain parts of who you are when you're unsure about what you're about and whatever it becomes really really hard to be confident so if i would advise on being confident i would definitely say that know who you are know what you want know what you're about um it makes confidence coming on much easier also the braces thing i did i have been considering getting braces for years until i actually started enjoying my smile now i actually like my smile so it's not that i never really liked my smile i know that i've got a nice smile i just didn't like my teeth but um for me I, I'm, I'm I'm quite comfortable with my teeth now. I'm quite comfortable with my smile now. Uh, I feel like it gives my smile a little bit of character as well. Like, hey. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite comfortable now. So I don't know. Maybe I might get them at a later stage in my life. Maybe I won't. And I'm quite cool with the process either way. Do you feel like you found your life's purpose? I feel like for me, this changes every day. I don't one day I think I do one day I, I don't know if I have um, the one thing that I do know that I feel like I was called for is to help others more especially to help women to share with women to share uh, words of encouragement words of empowerment words of you know let's be comfortable in ourselves and who we are and um, to help I feel like one of the biggest things that I have been called for mostly is to help and I enjoy helping others I enjoy helping other people it's not that um, it doesn't get tiring sometimes sometimes you know you help people but do people help you kind of situation but I enjoy so I feel like my purpose one of my purposes if that's a word in life is to help others and I feel like that is something that I've definitely tapped into that's definitely something that I'm aware of I do enjoy uh, helping others hi cat my question is what do you feel is missing in your life now nothing i feel like one of the things that i really really love about my life is i live a rather full life i feel like what is missing right now in my life is um literal like love from a partner to partner because i feel like i thrive more when i'm in a relationship i am dating now and there's somebody that i like and all of that but we're not quite at that stage where i feed off of um a relationship and 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 um i feed off it in, in such a way that it makes me a better human being for it we're not quite there yet i just have someone i like 
but aside from that i feel like i live a rather full life i've got a great family i've got a great support system i've got great friends i've got great people around me i'm sub i'm i'm surrounded by people who 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 just generally care of course there are people who don't like me but that's not my problem that's not my problem however i the people that i keep around me i learn something from we learn from each other we help each other we're there for each other and i love that and it's all the people in my life i'm talking friends family i'm talking uh, acquaintances i'm talking about all the people that are in my life so i don't makosha says hey cat first of all thank you for the amazing content you're welcome my question is are you open to dating outside of your race or nationality if yes are you willing to move out of SA to be with that particular person and settle there this is a very nice question am I willing to date outside of my race I mean I love me some black people okay I love me blackness I'm about blackness and I'm about black love but am I closed off to dating white or Indian colored I'm not closed off I feel like love is love at the end of the day um, uh, I just connect more with black people because I also like to um, when I'm in a relationship I like to talk in my vernacular language so I don't want to be talking English all the time you know what I mean uh, but that's a personal preference so for me I love black love and I love what black love stands for when it stands for the right things <laughs> um, but I also um, I dating outside of my race or nationality absolutely nationality please I can date somebody from Ghana Tanzania Kenya Italy uh freaking America I don't mind in terms of nationality uh, in terms of race I'm, I'm more inclined to, to, to go for the black folk. I love me the black folk. Love me the black folk. So, um, would I move out of SA uh, to be with that particular person and settle there? I would. I would. I would. If I found somebody that I care for and I love and um, they happen to be in a different country, um, I would. I would move and start a new chapter of my life. I wouldn't move... To be boyfriend and girlfriend do you understand what i'm saying i wouldn't I, I i would rather visit uh consistently and all of that i wouldn't move to be boyfriend and girlfriend but i feel like if we reach a certain stage in our relationship where we, we've settled or whatever or mahadis or whatever then i might consider something like that but not just as boyfriend and girlfriend i feel like if i can travel to you every now and again spend some time there time here you know chase the sun definitely if i can do that sure i can do that but move and settle permanently with just a boyfriend i don't think i could do that that's just not me um besides my whole life is here and i really love my family but if i'm moving to be with my husband sure sure <sighs> Tobeka says hi cat how do you deal with your mom's passing from time to time i know days are not the same the topic is very sensitive i know but i'm currently going through it all at this point um in the early stages after losing a parent it's very difficult in the early stages, and i'm talking about maybe the the first five years for me um living without my mother has been the most difficult those first five years were the most difficult because i would think about my mom all the time if i'm sick i'm thinking about my mom if i'm happy i'm thinking about how i'd love to share this with my mom if i am sad i'm thinking about my mom if i am um i want advice i'm thinking about my mom so for the first five years of being without my mother it was really really difficult um but then you lean on the support of family members who are genuinely there for you and genuinely support you if you've got another parent i leaned on my father a lot uh, after my mother's passing i spoke to my father i started being open with my father i mean i talked to my father about relationships i talked to my father about partners i talked to my father about my money matters i talked to my father about everything uh typically i know if my mom was around i'd probably share more detail with my mother and then give my father like a high level kind of thing but um because she isn't it's opened me up to having an awesome relationship with my dad and um it's sad that it came at the expense of having lost my mom 
But after that five years, I started settling into the fact that, you know, my mom is not around anymore. Um, but I, I, I was driven by the fact that I wanted to make her proud. Even though she isn't around, I wanted to make her proud. My mother was fiercely independent and my mother was fiercely strong, even in her opinion about men and relationships. She, my mother, how I feel and how I deal with relationships and dating right now is 100% my mom. And um, so it, it, it's made it easier over the years because all I think about when I think about my mom is how I can make her proud. And in that way, I just live my life in a, in, in a way that will make her proud. Uh, some days are harder than others, but it does get easier. I'm not gonna sit here and say that I still feel the pain and the hurt that I felt 11 years ago when my mother passed away. I don't, it's not the same anymore. However, I remember my mother, I, she's fiercely in, in, embossed in, and imprinted in, uh, in my mind and in my memory and in my heart and in my life that she is a part of my every day. But it does get easier and I feel like you just, you lean on the people that wanna be around you, you lean on the people that are about you and about supporting you through this time. Uh, but it does really get easier. So I'm really sorry that you are struggling at this time, but I promise you, promise you, it does get easier. It does get easier. Begazi says, hey cat, just curious, what course did you study in uni? I did a couple of things, but I studied, um, batch, I did a Bachelor of Social Sciences in uh, international relations and media communication. And then after that, I took a bit of time off and then I did my postgraduate in that, in international relations uh, with a, a, a specific uh, focus on um, poverty and children living in child-headed households. That was what my thesis was about. And then after a couple of years, then I did project management with VITS. I did project management along with uh, contract management in VITS. So that's what I did. That's what I studied. That's what I did. Part two says, thanks for allowing us to ask questions. You're most welcome. My question is, do you think you'll ever get bored of the career you're currently in? And if so, what do you think you'll transition into? Get bored, not necessarily. I really enjoy the career that I'm in and I feel like it's it's a, a career that um, is a fundamental part of my family and the legacy of my family. So I really, really enjoy the career that I am in and I don't see myself not loving it for forever and ever. I do, however, see myself wanting more. And one of the things that I want more of is to help women and to empower women, hence the conception of her story and why her story is around because I feel like I want to reach women in such a way that we can create a community for women where we can talk and share and engage and all of that. So um, I did realize that it's just not enough the career I'm in is just not enough and I want more. Maybe it's just me always wanting to do everything and everything at the same time. I feel like this is very comforting for me. That's why I have it in my hands. Um, they, maybe it's just me wanting to do everything and everything at the same time. But I love it and it's also me keeping busy and whatever and I love it. So yeah, um, I'll definitely probably want to do more and venture into different things the older I get. And I would love that. I would love to be in different feature, like have a leg in uh, different industries and all of that. Definitely, definitely. Not only just one career path, not for me, no. Um, Destiny says, hi Katel, I hope all is well with you. It is, my lady. it is, thank you. What is your channel mainly about? Um, out, of the, out of the following, big book reviews, Q and A's, home vlogs, and hauls. What kind of subscribers do you hope to attract to your content? Let me stop there because her question is fairly long my channel is a lifestyle challenge Ch -ch challenge my channel is a lifestyle channel which focuses mostly on my life and my life is vlogs within that those vlogs you will see what I like so you will see book content you will see working out and healthy living but mostly if you've been following my channel for a very long time, you will note that my channel has narrowed down to focus on my lifestyle in terms of what I like, the things that I'm about, my everyday life, uh, which includes books, hauls, 
what what but those are all incorporated in vlogs so if you want to come to my channel what you're expected to see is what i like what makes me just cut and um the things yeah the things that i like and also healthy living and healthy eating and all of that so that's all things that are present and uh, constant in my channel i've drastically reduced what i my channel did there was a lot of beauty videos and this and this segment and that segment drastically reduced it where i now just release vlogs and i release content that i like to release that doesn't come in the form of a vlog like a what i eat in a day or a candid with cat this is getting to know me a little bit more so that's what my content is about um what would you uh, what kind of subscribers do you hope to attract with your content the ones that like this kind of stuff stuff um uh, what would you do if you see that you're putting in more time and money in content creation and the number of subscribers isn't going up at the rate you expect at the end of the day i love doing this if uh the the numbers of subscribers isn't going up at the rate that i expect and it's really difficult for me i'm not going to sit here and lie for the last couple of weeks i haven't felt like recording i don't care to record because i feel like i put a lot of work into my content it's not necessarily money much at this point because i've got a great device that i record on i've got a laptop that i do all the things on and whatever so it's not really buying equipment for content creation all the stuff that i buy are things that I would typically buy even if I wasn't content creating like grocery hauls or clothes or plants or whatever these are all the things that you see in my channel or going to the gym or whatever these are things I would do without the content creation so I wouldn't say I'm spending vast amounts of money however I am consuming a lot of my time and my energy into content creation and because I'm seeing that it's not growing at the rate that I would like it to it I'm quite sad about it um, uh, but at the same time, it's not something that makes me give up. Um, I still do enjoy sitting in front of the camera. I do enjoy talking to you guys. I do enjoy showing you guys things and blah and blah and all of that. So it's, it's, it's not really going to stop until I feel like, uh, uh, that's not it anymore. And then I'll probably stop. Um, Namibian Empress says, uh, hi cat. I love your videos and your whole vibe. I'm watching from Namibia. Thanks girl. Hey. Uh, my question is about friends. Recently, I feel myself pulling away from a few of my friends. By that, I mean literally two. <laughs> anyway, they constantly support each other online and in person and go all out for their birthdays and for each other. But when it comes to me, it's lackluster and not as much effort. That's a red flag. Definitely a red flag. Um, and when we're together, they gang up on me. And I feel like uh, I want to be any place but there. They've been inviting me over. But something always happens and I cancel. I really didn't want to go anywhere. Am I wrong? Absolutely not. You should spend your time and focus your energies and time and all of that on people who are worth it. On people who will reciprocate the very same energy. So if they are not, and as you can say, you're saying here that when it comes to you, it's very lackluster, lackluster then you don't owe anyone any explanation. If you don't want to be around them because you know that they kind of... <laughs> then don't, then don't be around them. Then live your life and be cool with you and uh, do you. You are not wrong for choosing to remove yourself from a situation that doesn't make you happy. So if it doesn't, get out of there. <laughs> get out of there. Now I'm saying, hi Katleo. Uh, firstly, I wanna ask how you're doing genuinely. I'm very good, I'm very good. Thank you so much for asking. I'm very, very good, good. Um, secondly, if you were to name the season that you are in in your life, what would you name it? Be it uh, career-wise, social-wise, spiritual-wise. What season am I in in my life? Growth. I feel like I'm in the season of growth and healing um, and learning. That's, that's the season that I'm in. I'm learning a lot more about myself. I'm growing from all the things that are happening in my life. Um, and I'm also healing from all the things that have happened and yeah, so it's one of growth healing and what did I mention? That one. <laughs> Thirdly, in terms of spoiling yourself, what are the three things you would want to get yourself, be it material things or an experience? Um, watches. If I spoil myself, I buy watches. I, I get expensive watches. I buy watches 
if that's when I'm truly spoiling myself. If I spoil myself, I spoil myself for the next experience. I do not mind putting down money for a holiday, a short left, a good trip or whatever, and staying in a really nice place and whatever. That's truly spoiling myself. Um, if I'm spoiling myself, I am uh, treating myself to a good book. That's spoiling myself. Buying all these books that I buy is spoiling myself. That's really me spoiling myself. Um, time with my family would be me spoiling myself because I don't have that time anymore. I'm older now, so I'm always working and whatever, but if I could be with my family as and when I wanted and however often I wanted, I'd be with them all the time. But I can't because I got things to do and I got da da da. But uh, that's how I would spoil myself. I have so many questions I want to ask you. Uh, you seem so easy to talk to. Thank you. Uh, finally, what are your love languages? And let's say you're going through something. Do you feel like you use your love languages to sabotage yourself? No, I wouldn't say that. But my love languages are definitely words of affirmation. I love words. <laughs> and I really enjoy somebody who is very, you know, just just communicates themselves through their words and how they express their love to me through wording uh, and, and affirming me and affirming me as a person and as I would affirm them as a person. I love that. Uh, but uh, what else what is an act of service? Act of service for me is very, very important. I like to serve others. Very important to me. So I'd actually say physical touch would be the third one words of affirmation and acts of service those are my love languages definitely definitely uh let's move on to another one because i uh, can't answer like five questions oh my god i'm recording i'm gonna put you on speaker so that people the people i'm recording to can hear that you're, you're being mean to me <laughs> Give me two seconds, I'm almost done. All right, sure. All right, Chris, bye. Uh, I know this sounds silly, but how was your weekend? My weekend was great. It was good. Thank you so much for asking. It was good. Yeah. Advice for a girl who's about to finish varsity and navigate the adult world unsure of her path. Honestly, be easy on yourself. The biggest jarring thing of life is after leaving school and going into the working world and realizing that it's not as easy as it's made to look. It really isn't. You might struggle to find a job. You might struggle to do whatever. You might struggle to do this. Honestly, be easy yourself and be kind. Be kind to yourself as well at the same time because it is honestly really, really, really difficult. But persevere, push through it, have ambition, think differently, think outside the box. Um, there's so many things that we limit ourselves on uh, that we feel like as soon as I'm done with school, I'm going to find a job in my specific field and blah, 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 and I'm going to live my life and I'm going to be a working person or whatever. You can be an entrepreneur. You can be uh, whatever. You can do whatever. Think outside the box. Use the education you have learned to apply it in such a way that you think outside the box with it. But be very kind to yourself because it's going to be jarring. It's going to be what? This crazy. It's going to be like that. And just, just be kind to yourself. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. We pillow says, hi cat. You look, sorry, my camera just cut out. So I, Started it again. Hey, cat, you look amazing. Thank you, Wipelo. My question is how many days in the week do you work out? Three or four times a week. At the very least, three. If I can manage four, great. If I can manage five, normally the fifth day would be me going to swim. And I'll go and swim and t do a couple of laps in the pool, maybe like 10, because the gym pools are quite big. So maybe like 10 laps or whatever, just to move my body. And then I'll get out. But most of the time, three. Three or four times, give or take, roughly. I've got two questions for you. This is in Tadi. Hi, Kat. Um, I discovered you from your sister's channel and I'm getting to know you as well, which is exciting. I have two questions for you. Uh, how old are you? I'm 33. 
I'm 33. And what's your career path or educational background outside of YouTube? I've spoken about this on many, many of my videos. So please definitely binge watch and watch my videos and you'll see all of that. Um, hey ma'am, if you were to have one last, this is Timo. Uh, if you were to have one last conversation with your mom, what would it be about? That's a great question. Uh, I feel like, I don't know if it would be a serious conversation. I just want to have a chat with my mom. Um, where we can talk about everything from life to friendships to relationships to whatever nothing in specific like nah because I feel like my mom would always drop golden nuggets of wisdom and and in any conversation if I was talking to her about friends she'd drop a nugget the Sun is going down if I was talking to her about uh, uh, family members she drop a nugget relationships she drop a nugget so I definitely would just want to have a conversation with my mother any conversation just to sit with her for an hour and have a conversation I'd be comfortable um, when are we doing a grocery haul there's a vlog coming this week and it might have a grocery haul in it uh, first of all I want to thank you for putting this earlier uh, this is Dion and she says what helps you stay grounded my family I always say my family and my faith definitely first top two make me stay grounded how has gym been great I have officially passed the 21 day threshold where now my body and my muscle is remembering um, that's what happens you know these gym talks and whatever muscle memory is a real thing I've passed that threshold and now I'm good. I'm back at the gym. I was doing leg day today and I feel great. I feel good. I feel good. Thank you. I think that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it. I got a bunch of questions about doing a house tour. And again, I mentioned this a long time ago. I am not going to do a house tour. I'm never going to do one. I feel like that is a little bit too private for me. It's an invasion of my privacy. However, you see what you see in my vlogs. And I feel like that should be sufficient. But to take you in each corner of my house, I'm not going to do at all. Uh, but you'll see bits and pieces of my house and pictures in, in vlogs or whatever. But to run you through the whole house and tell you where this is from and that nah 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 do you stay with anyone this is from Irene uh, do you stay with anyone or do you live alone <laughs> I live alone okay that's pretty much it from me I'll leave the other questions for another Q&A at a later stage I hope you guys enjoyed this video it was lovely to do it for you and yeah i'll see you guys i need i need to make a call as you noticed i'll see you guys in the next video take care be good and stay safe Mwah. bye don't forget to subscribe